Israel Adesanya holds a mirror up to New Zealand society, speaks to our bullshit and forces us to ask ourselves some pretty hard questions. Go ahead and punch the crap out of that like button and let's get controversial. The first thing to acknowledge about Israel Adesanya is he is one of the baddest men on the planet. The reigning, defending, middleweight UFC champion of the world, a supremely talented, dedicated athlete who is packed to the brim with magnetism, charisma, and whether he's about to win his first UFC title saying to himself he's prepared to die, cheering for his mates, or falling asleep on the couch, people want to watch this Nigerian-born New Zealander who represents both nations pretty incredibly. In New Zealand, he doesn't get the respect he deserves though. Yeah, maybe some of that's down to like, the stigma of cage fighting, but I think it goes deeper than that. Izzy is not your usual Kiwi athlete. Number one, well, let's be honest. You can see that, um, uh, well, yeah. There it is, you know, he wears pearls. What, what were you thinking? Born in Nigeria and brought to New Zealand at the age of 10 for a chance at a better education, Izzy was met with racism. Wait, what now? Racism? Nah, not here in New Zealand. I've got heaps of, uh... Oh shit, I don't actually know a single person in New Zealand who looks like Izzy. Uh, what about, um, Israel Dag? Nah, he's just got the same name, I think. African New Zealanders only make up 0.3% of the population. But, he is a true Kiwi. Auckland, Vegas. When was the last time you heard an athlete give a shout out to Rota Vegas and Wanganui whilst on the world stage after butt pumping their foreign foe? That is Kiwi as bro! Israel was the victim of racism throughout high school, which sucks. There should be no place for that in Aotearoa. But we all know it happens. He was on the hard end of racial slurs and harassed for his love of dance and anime. He credits this to actually developing his interest and eventual passion for martial arts. I was bullied at school for my love of feminist art in post-communist Cambodia. Anyway, I, what I was saying was, he forces us to face racism in Aotearoa because he openly talks about it. Izzy is also outspoken about his confidence, abilities and achievements. Now, we Kiwis like nothing more than an athlete who plays out of their skin, does some superhuman shit, then says all the credit goes to the team because they made my job so easy. It's all a little typical and boring, to be honest. Just once! I would like to see the likes of Bowden Barrett come off the pitch and say he had a blinder. That the other team didn't even deserve to be on the pitch with him. It never happens when an athlete ever so much as dares to peek their head over the parapet of perceived Kiwi humility. You can bet that someone's big brother will be there to tell them to pull their head in and stop being such a dick. It's okay to be proud. It's okay to feel good about your achievements. Especially when you've had to work your ass off every day to get there. Earn your success, but by all means enjoy it. Otherwise, what the fuck is the point of it all? Mr. Israel Adesanya has squarely and entirely fired shots at the ideals that perpetuate New Zealand tall poppy syndrome. If you see one of us shining, whether it be the netball team, the black caps, the sailors, Pump them up, embrace them, because if they win, we win. If I win, you win. Understand that. For all those people who live outside New Zealand and Australia, tall poppy syndrome is when you're attacked, resented, and criticized for your achievements. Yes, it's flipping backwards. Often in New Zealand, when someone achieves something, instead of being praised, which you know is normal, they are jeered with phrases like, ah, look at this guy. He thinks he's hot shit. It's pretty twisted. Don't get me wrong, we love a winner, but we love them painfully humble. The ones that don't make us feel inadequate. What is wrong with us? Once again, Izzy holds up a mirror to our society with his openness and willingness to talk about his achievements without pretense. It's rare in New Zealand, but it's super refreshing. Those of us who have followed Izzy's career throughout the UFC have noticed that he has always lobbied to bring a large title fight to these shores. But we need to run that back in Auckland. We need to run that back in my territory this time. Until very recently, he announced that he would never fight in the land of the long white cloud. He took the stance because of the treatment of one of the most successful teams in New Zealand's illustrious sporting history. And that team, of course, is City Kickboxing. From right here in Tamaki Makoto. During COVID, we've all had to make several sacrifices. And I believe governing a nation during these times is about as appealing as being a full-time human piss trough in a home specifically for men with urinary infections. But, there has never been a group of New Zealand athletes that has dealt with such a clear double standard and harsh treatment as CKB. 
Despite the team doing everything to comply with lockdown rules, many of the fighters moved to the gym away from their families living a Marai style living so they could continue their fight camps and in order to, you know, keep the powers of B happy. This worked during the first few lockdowns, but for no apparent reasons, the powers of B said a big no to do this at the beginning of the outbreak with Delta. Douchebag media members stalked the likes of Dan Hooker and other gym members, and other gym members were actually threatened with arrest. This while the All Blacks, New Zealand cricket teams and Olympic teams were afforded every privilege in terms of training bubbles and they were also set aside precious managed quarantine spots. CKB athletes like the aforementioned Dan Hooker had to hang around in the US, Middle East like a fart in a bottle waiting for someone to somehow get them home. Instead of being assisted as other international athletes were, the world class fighters at CKB, many of whom who draped themselves in the Kiwi flag, were actively obstructed for competing and showcasing their homegrown talents on the world stage. The government were about as helpful to city kickboxing as I am when I'm trying to help a mate put up a fence. I start with no understanding or knowledge and with everything I do I screw up, causing my mate to redo everything I've done again, wasting their time and damaging our friendship. But hey, at least I was trying to be kind. The Kiwi thing to do here is to cop it on the chin, mumble something about not getting the rub of the green and boil away in silent resentment. Not easy. He was open with how he felt. He called out the double standard on many platforms. He spoke about the damage it was doing to his team, his teammates and their careers, and their ability to make a living for their families. But this was when he actually stated that he would never fight in his hometown, which as a Kiwi fight fan sucks ass. Finally, Izzy has been open with his mental health. While stating he didn't suffer from depression, he has mentioned that he felt a bit flat after his debut fight and sought the assistance of a counsellor during this period. Not everyone is mentally ill, but Everyone has to look after their mental health. Yes. If you don't, then you will get sick, yes. just like your physical health. Yes. If you don't look after, if I start eating shit, drinking all day, I'll get yes. physically sick. So if you don't look after your mental health, then you're gonna get mentally ill. This for me is an incredibly wise statement. New Zealand has one of the highest suicide rates in the OECD. Far too many of us, including myself, living in New Zealand, know someone or know people who have tragically taken their own lives. It's far too common an occurrence, especially amongst males in New Zealand. It's been theorised that New Zealand's culture of being tough, showing no weakness, being unable to freely express yourself for fear of being called soft, and effectively closing yourself off to expressing your emotions to others is a significant contributor to this national crisis. So this is why someone like Israel Adesanya, who was one of the most skilled martial artists the world has ever seen, who is open with his thoughts and his feelings, is crucial to our society. This behaviour should be celebrated, not condemned. The key word in this piece has been openness, because it seems to me that a lot of our problems, especially for men in New Zealand, come from being closed off. Izzy has been open in his acknowledgement of racism, open in his confidence about his achievements and personal identity, open to pointing out injustices in our society, and most importantly, open to his active management of his mental health. I think it's about time for New Zealanders we recognise all the great things he's done and that he stands for. And be open to this Nigerian Kiwi, the one and only, the last style vendor, Israel Adesanya. Please like and subscribe. Let me know how you feel about Izzy's complicated relationship with New Zealand in the comments. And thank you so much for watching Distracted Sports. Mwah!